Today I want to talk about a recent case involving traumatic capsular uh, rupture and the setting of a penetrating ocular injury. You can see the freely mobile cortex. We are not initially uh, sure of where the capsular defect is, so we use uh, air bubble and tripan blue to stain the anterior capsule. You can see us painting on the capsule here and then displacing it with PSS. This is a patient who had had penetrating ocular injury approximately four weeks uh, prior. We were uh, forced to come in at this point uh, due to increasing intraocular pressures, which is known as lens particle glaucoma. And then here is an um, underappreciated step, which is to simply examine the anterior capsule and try to come up with a game plan. And here we can see that there are at least uh, two areas of violation. One option would be to try to incorporate this defect into your capsule rexus, but this is large enough and peripheral enough that I don't think that's a viable possibility. I decided to try to use the anterior vitrector handpiece to make an opening, which is called a vitrector rexus. But I'm not successful here. It's kind of like trying to bite an inflated balloon. I can't get it started because there's no edge to grab. And so I decided to use a 27 gauge needle on a syringe. I'm going to use that uh, as I go in to aspirate uh, any uh, loose or liquefied uh, cortex to try to prevent run out um, of this uh, incision. And then I use it to gently lift a flap. Then I'll use these um, micro forceps to take that flap and carry it around. This is under a very cohesive viscoelastic. There's no hurry here. I uh, very carefully bring this around using a, a number of uh, frequent grass. I'm doing this simply through the a paracentesis here which allows for a more stable uh, chamber. I'm simply trying to make an opening that's big enough to gain access to this cataract which in and of itself in this young person is not all that dense and I believe that I'm going to be able to remove it utilizing mostly bimanual aspiration. You can see I get into an area of scarring here in the original injury. I don't want to place undue force in that area because I'm worried it's going to radialize so I use these micro scissors to complete that uh, portion I believe this is big enough for me to be able to have access to the cataract. And then I use a dispersive uh, viscoelastic to uh, viscodissect uh, the cortex and epinucleus away from the capsule. And then I use bimanual hand pieces uh, to begin removing the cataract, which you can see is quite soft. I start in an area that's as far away as possible from the existing trauma and carefully uh, engage uh, the pieces to minimize any traction on the area of violation. And you can see that I switch hands here and come uh, from the other direction, slowly working my way towards the area of trauma. And when I engage uh, each piece, I'm careful to try to pull uh, tangentially rather than centrally. Again, all of this uh, is in an effort to try to minimize the amount of stress that I'm placing on the existing areas of trauma. You can begin to see that I'm left with a anterior capsular ribbon uh, which uh, I don't believe is intact enough to uh, support traditional optic capture. It's also close enough to the central part of the vision that I'm worried that it will impair this patient's visual acuity if left in place. So I use the vitrector uh, to just cut that area and, and make it so that it won't be in the central visual axis. I'm using my 2.2 uh, millimeter keratome here uh, to create a wound which I enlarge slightly uh, knowing that I'm going to be using a larger cartridge for this three-piece lens. I believe this technique is something that uh, every anterior segment surgeon should review periodically is how to inject a three-piece lens now, those of us that don't do it uh, extremely often, we need to have that in our toolbox to be able to carry out at a moment's notice. We inject that into the sulcus and then slowly uh, work it into a well-centered and uh, supported position in the sulcus. Uh, anytime you have a uh, more complex case like this, I highly recommend uh, securing the main wound uh, with a nylon stitch. We've injected myocol, and you can see that the pupil's fairly round. Uh, and we test the um, paracentesis in the main wound, which you can see are watertight. This patient has done quite well in the postoperative period. 
although due to the amount of irregular astigmatism, he will likely require a scleral contact lens or a penetrating keratoplasty for the clearest vision post-op. Thanks for watching. Good luck.